Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our routing for this application. So Angular's router will basically allow us to navigate from view to view or from one view to another using links much the same way that we would use basic HTML links. So we're going to have a singleton instance of the Angular router service. And whenever the URL in our application changes its value, Angular's router is going to look for a corresponding route so that it can determine which components to activate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a routes TypeScript file. And we can create this directly within the source directory in our project. So outside of the app directory, I'm going to go ahead and right click on source and create a new file. And we're just going to call this routes.ts. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is import routes from Angular router. So it'll be at Angular slash router. And then we're going to export a constant value app routes, which will be of type routes. And this will be an array of the various routes in our system. So what we're seeing here, just as we have seen and will continue to see in our components, we have the ability to actually type objects in our system using TypeScript. So this colon routes tells us that this constant app routes needs to be of type routes, which we're importing from the Angular router. And so our, for our purposes, for this application, the route will simply consist of a path, which will be some path, and a component to activate. So some component. And we can continue to add different paths corresponding to different components for Angular Router to serve up. So in the sort of central part of our application here in the middle, this will be where we have our what's called our router outlet. So in other words, when new components get activated by the router, we are, we're going to inject them here. So in order to get this working, I'm going to go ahead and create the three components that correspond to the pages for sales volume, latest orders, and system health for application to actually serve up here. So if we head back to the terminal, and I can just ng gc to create a new component. We'll call the first one section sales. We'll call the, the next section orders, so section orders. And finally, we'll have one called section health. Okay, cool. So now if we head back into our app routes, and I'm gonna actually just maximize the code for the time being. Notice that we have just created the these components section orders, health, and sales. So what I'm gonna do inside the app directory is to create a new folder, and I'm just gonna call this sections. And now I'm gonna drag each of the section components that we just created into this directory. Now you'll notice that inside each of these new component directories that we have created, we have the standard HTML spec file, TypeScript file, and style sheet that we've seen before. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. And what we need to do is now head into our app.module.ts. And here we need to modify this relative path to each of these components now. So each of these will actually be in our sections directory and then in their respective location from that point. Oops, and we do need to remember to have a forward slash here as well. Okay, with that taken care of, we can head back into our routes.ts file now and put some legitimate routes here in our routes array. So the first path we'll have will be to sales and this will correspond to the section sales component. And now we just need to make sure to import that and the other components that we have just created. So we'll have our section sales component And this will be, again, in our app directory because we're outside of the app directory here in our routes. We have sections, section sales, section sales dot component. Likewise, we'll go ahead and fill out our other two imports here as well. So we had section orders. from section orders and section orders. 
dot component. Finally, we have our section health component. And we fill it out likewise. Okay, so now we can actually include those two additional routes in our app routes array. So we'll have an orders path and a health path. And this will correspond, of course, to the health component and this to the orders component. So this path will be relative to the base path URL in our application. So in our case, it will just be served up at localhost port 4200 in this case, and then slash sales when we want to activate the sales component slash orders or slash health respectively. Finally, what we'll do here is we'll say that when the path is empty, we can redirect to sales. And so that'll be the default sort of homepage, if you will, when we visit the application. We also need to provide a path match here and set it to full. Basically, path match full here means that the whole URL path needs to match. The other option is to have path match prefix here, which would allow us to search for some matching child routes um, but basically we just need to specify path match full here to get the default redirect behavior that we in this case are looking for. Okay, now we can actually immediately wire up our routing if we just visit our app.component.html template. And what we're going to do here inside of this div where we have the ID of dashboard is supply router outlet. And the last thing that we need to do to get this to work is to head into our app.module.ts and just below browser module, I'm going to import the router module. And this will be imported from that Angular router. With that done, we need to take a look at the imports array here under our ng module decorator within our ng module decorator and we need to call router module dot for root and this for root will set up a specific listener for the app routes that we just created in our app routes file. So in order to have access to this, what we need to do is to, I'm going to head up right under router module here and just go ahead and import app routes. Notice on our imports here, we, we don't have the file extension on the imports, but this corresponds to the routes.ts file within uh, you know, the parent directory here. Likewise, each of these imports from each component corresponds to the component TypeScript file in each of their respective locations. And so that's actually, in a sense, all we need to do to set up some very basic routing for our application. So if we head back to our app, We can see this section sales works. It's getting called from our sales component that we created. The formatting is still off. We need this to actually go in this sort of central area for our application. So let's go ahead and fix that very quickly. And then we'll make sure that our links here activate the particular section components that we need. Let's go ahead and fix the styling now so that our section sales component is getting rendered where it needs to be here in the central part of the application. And then we'll also wire up the links here so that they activate their respective components. So I'll head over into our app component.html template. First of all, I'll go ahead and remove the top line here about the placeholder. And I'm going to add some additional CSS classes here to the div that wraps our router outlet. We're also going to give this a role of main. These classes provide some specific uh, spacing utilities, uh, specifically the MLSM auto and PT3 here from Bootstrap. 
I'll put up a link for the Bootstrap docs if you're interested in diving into more detail regarding each of the Bootstrap classes. In a sense here, we're controlling the margins and taking advantage of Flexbox here to control our layout. And we'll also keep our ID of dashboard for this div. If we take a look at the page now, we can see that section sales is getting rendered here in the sort of main area of our application. So now let's make it so that when we click on each of these links, we actually activate the uh, corresponding component in this area. So what I'll do is I'll head back into our sidebar component. And so we'll actually head into the sidebar template here. So sidebar.component.html. And rather than an href, what we're going to do is actually supply an, a router link directive. And so directly inside of this anchor tag, we can say router link. And then here, all we need to do is to provide the relative path that matches the route corresponding to the component that we'd like to activate. So for our sales volume link here, I'd like to just use a router link pointing to our sales route. And it's really as simple as that. Likewise, we'll do the same here for our latest orders. which we said would be at slash orders. And then finally, we'll have a router link here to the health section. So just something to keep in mind, when you see a pattern like this, you might begin to think that we could actually make this sidebar component a little bit more modular and flexible by in a sense, parameterizing these list elements so that we might provide some input in the future um, regarding the types of links that we'd like to create. And ultimately, we might have something more like this, where we'd have an unordered list that had a link in it, that had a router link of like some value. And I'm just gonna kind of pseudocode here a little bit, where we also supply the particular link maybe like link name. And what we could do, and we'll talk about this in future views here, is do ng4 on the list element. We might have something like link in links. And we'd have like link dot route value and link dot name. So again, this is just kind of quickly mocking up something that you might um, look at in the future when we talk about how to actually provide inputs into our components. And this might be a way to make the sidebar component more modular. Now we have a, a pretty simple layout and a pretty simple system to set up here. So for now, we're just going to simply hard code the links in place here as we have. And then in the future, as we kind of see how the rest of the application works and how, again, how Angular handles inputs, and passing data between parent and child components, you may come back and take a look at how we had initially written this as it is here and make it a little bit more flexible. Okay, but for now, let's go ahead and use it as it is and make sure that everything is still working. So we'll head back to the page. And if we click on latest orders, we should now see that section orders works and section health works. Okay, so that's it. You'll also notice um, that the URL in our browser is also updating. This is kind of nice. We're just basically activating and, and turning on different uh, components depending on which link that we've clicked here. And that's all provided out of the box by Angular Router. All we had to do really was specify the routes that we'd like to hit and then tell Angular that those particular routes correspond to each of these individual components. And we set that up in our routes.ts file. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick commit. So we'll say git commit set up routes. Okay, in the next video, we'll start taking a look at creating our first chart using chart.js.